Hello and welcome back to another class guide. My name is Heiken and today we're revisiting War Tales classes. These are deep dive guides. I am doing regular guides with precise, on point, no BS, no repetition mode where we get straight to the point. I'm revisiting each of the classes mainly because a lot has changed. Helmets have come out since I released the original class guides. The Pugilist has been uh, released and the fourth class skill has been released meaning 7th uh, and 5th levels got new class skills. And I got a couple of questions from the original guide. So this is not a replacement of the original guide. This is seemingly just an add-on uh, with alternative builds. Uh, the current guide will go through two additional builds. Sometimes they are variations of the original build. Sometimes they are actually new builds. And we're going to see how they fare. On top of that, I want to add some gameplay footage, so stay tuned to see how the classes are actually playing out. Let's jump right into it. So today's class is the Brood. I have two builds uh, prepared. One is a variation on the tanky build and one is a variation on an aggression build with a two-handed weapon. Both of these builds uh, work fantastically well. I will go through everything, including stat distribution, traits, um, the actual build and equipment. As always, I'm trying to select equipment that is not overbearing so that you can see that these builds are going to be fine, even with normal leveling and when you're playing it and you don't need end game equipment in order to pull them off. So let's talk about the Brute and how we're going to set them up as a tank. If you are playing a tank, you want to focus on guard, as you know by now, because it just reduces the damage. 80% is the maximum guard, which means 80% reduction of all of the hits, unless you're being attacked from behind. In that case, half it, so then it's only 40%. We're having a level 12 uh, Brute here uh, with just basic equipment. So we have an Arcadian Steel Morning Mace, that's the crafted level 11 uh, gear. We have an Arcadian Steel Helmet, so that's the heavy helmet, a breastplate and a shield, as well as a trinket uh, that I'm going to explain in a second. The important part from a defensive perspective is um, if you reach close to 80% uh, guard, you will take much, much less damage. In this case, we do have 614 armor and 180 um, health. So that's give and take 800 hit points worth of um, defense. And uh, the guard 80% would essentially mean you take only 20% of the damage. So the effective health of that is not 800, but five times as much. So 4,000 effective health, which is quite uh, decent for a tank. In terms of stat distribution, you always want to start with movement uh, so that you can actually get to the 20-22 movement uh, range on the higher level. And you want to make sure, maybe even before you go into movement, to have 15 willpower because the tank will take quite a bit of beating. Once you're done with both of that, the rest goes into critical uh, hit. You could al uh, also alternatively increase constitution or strength a little bit, much to your liking. But these two stats, willpower and movement, are going to be key. Now, off to the actual equipment and why did I choose what I choose. Starting with the weapon, I suppose. So on the weapon, and let's talk about the role of uh, the class. If you are a tank, you are a Valor donor. Uh, your job is really to create Valor as much as possible. And that is what I've optimized this class to do. So we do have the Arcadian Steel Maze, upgraded it as much as uh, we can uh, with uh, the alteration feature uh, of the Blacksmith. So it's dealing a reasonable amount of damage. We're going to see it in the clip, but that's not the point of the class. The class here is trying to get as least possible damage in as it uh, can theoretically get. And on top of that, just create as much valor as it can. So uh, we use the Braves oil, which gives us a 50, respectively 100% uh, chance to uh, regain one valor whenever we're um, using a valor based skill. I've used the Braves oil concentrate as uh, the belt accessory. So both together means whenever I'm using a valor based skill, I'm definitely getting one uh, valor back. On top of it, whenever we're attacked, we have a 25% chance to uh, generate another valor. Mind you, both of that uh, doubles when you have orderly. 
uh, you will see in the actual build that we get another Vader for every time that we're engaging someone and we're going to engage very often. So even without orderly, we are Valor positive on every single time that we're engaging an enemy, um, allowing us to regain quite a lot of Valor. In terms of um, the actual helmet, we have opted with the standard feature, Chaotic Poise on top of it. You could put other imprints on the helmet, but I wanted to have 30% less damage that we're taking whenever we are engaged. As long as the unit is engaged, that means even when they are disengaging with attacks of opportunity, they do have protection. Uh, so that is 30% flat off of uh, the damage that you're taking. And you will see that the build has a couple of other uh, damage reductions on top of it. So we'll come to that in a second. Um, as for the um, actual uh, guard, um, guarding armor here, we do have uh, the colossal reinforced layer of the ox. Uh, which is a fantastic, um, a fantastic armor layer. Six guard and 18 armor gets our guard up all the way to almost maximum. I could um, drop the movement uh, rune and uh, just at level 13 go even higher on movement. But the point is we're already maxed out. We could add another armor rune in order to make it stronger or a strength rune in order to make the hits a little bit harder. But generally speaking, you should stick with the guard and armor runes guard first. And then when you are at around 80%, you can either increase armor further or you're increasing strength further. So that's it from the skills, uh, from the equipment perspective. Let's look at the skills. In terms of skills, this build is designed around taking the least possible damage, even if it is not your uh, turn, plus generating a lot of Valor. So keep that in mind. We're going, uh, when it comes to tank, really again with the destroyer route. In my humble opinion, this here is by far the best uh, option that you could take. So that's why I included it again as a revised tank build. For level 3 we're going into Valorous Duel. Whenever we engage we gain one Valor. Keep in mind uh, that is cumulative to the other Valor and you will see that that means we're actually gaining a lot of traction with the build as we're engaging. We're continuously generating that Valor. So then uh, the trick of this build is we're looking into Cruelty. Cruelty in the upgraded version does not only increase damage and critical hit uh, by 20% against units with one debuff, mind you. Uh, the weakening uh, blow from Destroyer weakens the enemy, so they are not only vulnerable, um, uh, but they also will reduce their damage by 50%. So let's say if an enemy um, deals 100% damage, uh, 100 damage per strike, not only would our normal guard already reduce it to 20, now it is reduced uh, to 10 with weakening blow. And with Cruelty, um, they deal also, and that's the upgraded uh, version um, of the skill, they also deal 20% less damage to this unit. So instead of 10, it's only 8 points of damage. Uh, keep in mind we did have the protection, uh, so 30% damage reduction, so we're already down to 5 points of damage from 100 uh, points of damage just by stacking weakening, uh, basically cruelty, then protection and uh, the the normal guard that we do have. But that's not all, it's getting better. After taking a couple of attacks, and you will get a lot of attacks in with this build, um, you're going to get deflection and repost. So basically every second attack will get another 70% damage uh, reduction. Uh, that means instead of five points of damage, we're already down to one point uh, of damage. So it's kind of alternating between one and five points of damage. And on top of it, every second attack, you also gain repost, which means uh, we can strike back. So there is even a little bit of retaliation going. So these three skills together are very solid core foundation of the build together with guard. Uh, the build is taking very, very low amounts of damage. Next up, uh, and I'm going in order how I would uh, skill it uh, during the leveling process, you take defensive repost, which basically means once we're disengaging, there is a 50-50 of uh, doing a uh, dealing or taking attacks of opportunity instead of 100% chance of taking them. 
So this build is not optimized around attacks of opportunity, it's just a reduction of damage that you're taking. The attacks of opportunity are just the icing on the cake, so to speak. And finally, on the class specialization, we take another uh, fantastic ability. I, this time, in this build, went with rivalry. Um, oftentimes, you are being uh, faced with multiple opponents, specifically in larger maps. In that case, rivalry is not optimal, but um, I, my logic with that build was there is always going to be that situation where you either need to tank a boss or where you are um, simply the, the first in engaging unit uh, where it's one on one or where you are the last standing unit when armor is getting sparser and sparser and in uh, that case rivalry is really good so damage dealt by engaged opponent is again reduced by 50 percent if there are no other units next to them if they are isolated and you can <clears throat> really uh, create a scenario where that is the case of course this one here would fall off once you do have multiple units engaged but Think about all of uh, the stacking debuffs, 50% from vulnerability. Then you do have um, another 20% if they are debuffed. You do have 70% uh, every second uh, strike from uh, deflection. Then you do have 50% reduction from rivalry. You have 30% reduction from uh, the simple protection. And on top of it, you have 80% guard. So it's a really tanky build and we're going to see how that performs. All right, we are focusing on the Brute. We got ourselves a little situation here where the enemy is about to attack. This defender will come in swinging and he is one of the worst defenders that we could uh, take on. He has not only a level advantage over us, but he also has um, Fever uh, with massive in, uh, increase in damage and he does have measured response, one of the very, very worst abilities for any melee because every time this unit takes a critical hit in melee, they perform an attack of opportunity. So that's really kind of a back and forth. Let's see how well our Brute is going to stand up and measure against this guy. He's coming in, hitting us for 16. Let that sink in because we uh, are effectively uh, going to tank uh, the boss. This guy here has over a thousand and one hundred effective uh, normal health and with 60% guard he does he even have more than that. So keep in mind our idea is to bind as many enemies as possible and really what I'm going to showcase is how sturdy we are, right? So we're going to start with uh, fracturing him, making him weakened. Uh, and just count uh, the valor that you're going to see. We're going to hit him, take a hit in return. As you can see, we're unfortunately now uh, taking a lot of attacks of opportunity from him due to his measured uh, counter uh, mm, uh, response. But we're not going to uh, mm, uh, take that as a negative. We're just going to accept it for what it is because we do have a lot of armor. Just take a look at the amount of armor. We're uh, getting so much valor out of it. Uh, we're uh, continuously keeping everything uh, everything full and we're stopping at a non-disengaged uh, state. I could, uh, with more special equipment, continue to, uh, uh, to weaken him and most certainly it... Uh, uh, and attack further to even get more Valor. And uh, certainly in other cases, you would uh, see that uh, this Brute is dealing more damage, but we haven't really reduced his guard yet. What we've done though, is we have fought through almost half of his guard and we took like what? A me measly amount of damage. This is the boss, he's out leveling us, he has better gear. And we, although he has attacked this first, did not only uh, create a lot of Valor points, we are capped. This is why you're not seeing the three, four Valor points on top of it. But we also dealt half uh, of the damage and made sure that he's only dealing meager amounts of damage at this point. So really strong build in its, uh, in its core to tank and uh, remain at the front line. Next up, we do have the second Brute build. This time we're going to go with a Vanguard build, which is a two-handed weapon uh, build. So we're changing the theme from tank to damage dealer. We're downgrading to medium armor. 
And I'll just really briefly mention that the attributes are essentially the same as you would be used to. We're trying to get movement, we're trying to <clears throat> get to 15 willpower, and then the rest goes into critical hit. With the right food, we're going to be up 100% on crit here. So we are crit capped. Uh, I've used standard equipment as always, self-smithed um, equipment to keep it uh, easy and simple. The build should shine and not the equipment. Uh, we're going to go with uh, the Stamp Brotherhood Charisma to increase the brutality, as in increase um, the damage of our adjacent allies if we're standing together. Um, it used to increase your own damage, but it is still good as it is. We're going to increase the critical hit chance with all of our armor runes by using uh, the mirror rune, uh, the mirror's brooch, and we're using a two-handed uh, morning star for damage, which in itself already deals a lot of uh, damage to all uh, units, and uh, damage is further increased uh, against units that still have armor. So you will see the uh, Brood really has the concept of dealing a lot of damage against armored units, which is also why in this build we're not caring too much about guard. Uh, that will come from the skill tree. Instead, we're using explosive oil, uh, which uh, every time we're dealing damage, uh, there is a 50% chance for 50% uh, damage uh, at adjacent enemies. That becomes much more uh, potent once you put the explosive oil concentrate in. So it's effectively 50% uh, damage guaranteed to adjacent units on top of the damage that you're doing. Combine that with infectious oil that every time a skill deals damage, uh, there is a 50% chance to inflict that amount of damage as a debuff and you will deal a lot of uh, damage. Now, that in itself is already a very, very potent uh, core build. Uh, we are now going to look at the skills and then we're taking a look at how it plays. In terms of skills, we're going uh, through the Vanguard route, which uh, reduces our armor to medium and it gives us Relentless Charge, which disengages out of a melee uh, scenario and then charges in a straight line, dealing damage, creating slowdown. And if we end our turn, uh, the, unit, um, the unit next to an enemy, then we will get fury on top of it. Now that in itself is already great and Relentless Arch uh, does a lot of damage, but on top of it, uh, it uh, creates fury. So the next attack after the Relentless Charge uh, gains 50% more attack value. Whenever we are, we're then going into the Val Valorous Chain to get Vela points back when we attack multiple enemies, and that's really the name of the game for the Brood. Uh, and we're combining that with Armor Break, and this is really why we don't need a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, guard reduction. Matter of fact, we need none, because damage inflicted to Armor is increased by 35%, and if the attack from this unit destroys the enemy's Armor, you stack Brutality, and gain inspiration on top of it. And Brutality is a stacking above 30%, uh, which uh, can stack uh, with itself. And uh, the good part about Armor uh, Breaker is you will break a lot of armors, therefore consequently continuing to uh, up the damage of uh, this character um, essentially even further. Now, the next one is Guard Breaker, as uh, the attacks ignore 100% of the enemy's guard, which is why we completely ignore guard in any of uh, the builds. We're using defensive repost uh, so that in case we are engaged, there is a good chance that we're actually taking the attack. And we're using the class specialization in order to uh, increase damage and critical hit uh, strikes against units with one debuff. You remember that nice little slowdown that uh, Relentless Charge does? Exactly. That is a debuff. So naturally, we're going to increase the damage quite a bit. So that's really the combination. We're rushing through two, three enemies. Uh, we're then having a slowdown um, on them. They already took damage. We're then going to hit as part of uh, that massive hit. Armor is being destroyed. Brutality is being applied. 
uh, we're getting a nice little 20% uh, damage buff here. We're getting 35% against uh, armor in particular. We're getting another 100% on top of that. And the maze um, gives us another 50% damage increase if the units still have armor. So that will make up for a really, really sizable attack. And the relentless charge in itself isn't to be scoffed at. You can even later, if you uh, if you have the legendary trinket to attack twice, uh, just start with a legendary hammer, uh, hit multiple times, then go to another pack, relentless charge, and then hit again, killing essentially two packs at once, which is a really nifty uh, combination if you can pull it off. So let's see how the build plays with that base equipment. So we find ourselves in an interesting position where our captain, the Brute, uh, is going to help us. So we're fighting against level 14 enemies, quite outleveled, highly, highly equipped, and they do have measured response, uh, which is a really, really bad counterattack mechanic, uh, which will eat your melees up alive. But our uh, tank line down here has nicely engaged them. And that's the perfect scenario for us uh, to basically start dishing out uh, some damage. Look at the amount of massive carnage that is coming through here. He just went through two of the tanks and uh, uh, killed them uh, without further regard. Um, we can even move in further and go to the back line. As I mentioned, right after you are using Relentless Charge, you're getting Fury. So you can uh, see just how much damage we have done with that. And another 300 and, uh, uh, 340 just to round up uh, the, uh, the amount. We're going to uh, reinforce the front line over here. And that's really it. Uh, I could have, if those two would have survived, we would have just went to here, hit all three and actually kill them. But I think you can see just how strong Relentless Charge is. Deals a lot of damage crits for m way more than 400. We're ignoring armor altogether. Since we have broken armor, we are now sitting at uh, three brutality stacks which gives us 90% extra damage. Just let that sink in. So the Brute will continue to just overall be stronger and stronger and stronger as time goes by. Very, very, very strong. All right, we're done with the build guide and deep dive uh, to the specific class. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like guides, I do have plenty of them for War Tales. If you enjoyed what you've seen and took value out of it, I would appreciate if you leave a like and a comment uh, down below. That always helps to propel the videos and helps the channel. And it's a little bit of given, uh, given back. Thanks for watching. See you on the next guide and have a great day. Bye bye.